Hello everybody, it's UXW Bill here once again. Today my mother and I are making delicious chili and what's more, even though it takes forever to upload, we're making delicious chili in high definition. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to make delicious chili because it's freezing outside. So we're going to start with some chopped onions. We use a white onion, a sweet onion, and we chop it up, not very fine, and we'll put that in a very large pot because we're going to make a lot of chili. We're going to have lots of hungry people here later on in the day, and they're going to be cold, and they're going to be hungry. Next we have four pounds of ground meat, and I would suggest that you use a good grade of meat so as to reduce the amount of fat that you have to drain off. So the first thing I'm going to do is brown the onions and the hamburger together. And when that is browned and the onions are nice and tender, we'll drain off the grease and add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, folks, we're back again. We've got our hamburger very nicely browned. Now, it's really important to drain the grease off of that. Nobody wants their chili to be greasy. And in this day and age where everybody's health conscious, not only do you want to use a good grade of hamburger, but you want to drain it really well. So... Don't pour this down your sink drain either. It'll congeal and then you'll be calling a plumber. Look at all that. And to think, that could be in your uh, arteries and veins and things. So we'll drain the grease off real, real well. Use caution because it's hot. Yes. <clears throat> it would have been interesting to use a Pyrex measure just to measure exactly how much grease we really did drain off. But now here's our hamburger and it looks like we have just a nice broken up hamburger mixture. A lot of people won't tell you their secrets to good chili making, but I will. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add I would say about a tablespoon of sugar white granulated sugar to my brown hamburger and onion. Now the purpose of the sugar is twofold. Not only does it make the onions a little bit sweeter, but it also takes the bitterness out of the tomatoes. Next thing I'm going to do is add one can of petite. And you want to make sure you use petite because the bite size pieces are much more appetizing. So we've got petite diced tomatoes, juice and all. And if you're an ingredient or a label reader, it's just tomatoes, tomato juice, nothing else is in here. Alrighty. And the next thing that we're going to do... This is the fun one. Where's the can opener? There it is. Over here. I'm going to use some tomato juice. All On the right. next episode, we'll discover the advantages of multi-port tomato injection on the gasoline engine. Now, I've got some homemade tomato juice I could have gone downstairs to get, but this is quicker. So, one whole can of tomato juice to about four pounds of hamburger, one diced onion, can of diced petite tomatoes, and about a good generous handful or tablespoon full of sugar. Okay, so we're going to mix this around. And I don't believe I'll add any salt, if any, because when people put the saltines in their chili, they'll get the salt that way. So that's what we've got right now. And the next thing that we're going to do is start to add our different beans some delicious chili that I once had at a friend's house. She shared her recipe with me and she puts pork and beans in her chili. 
And as you can now, see, that's what we have here. We want to look for pork and beans in tomato sauce, not baked beans. And we don't need to, to drain this at all. Got a little piece of the label in there. Okay, because it's in tomato sauce. You could have left the label in there if you're short on your fiber. Okay. And you so, suppose that pinto beans are, don't you have some pinto beans somewhere? I suppose those are made from like old Ford pintos or something. <laughs> so we've got two cans of pork and beans. And the pork and beans are nice to use because the beans are small and they're tender and they're in tomato sauce. So that's the first addition that we're going to put in our chili. And on the can it says that they're navy beans. You have a stray bean there. So, navy beans are a small bean, so that's how we start. With two cans of pork and beans in tomato sauce. Okay, beans that I'm going to add, and this is for color and texture to make the chili appealing and aesthetically nice to look at. We want to get some different color in there. So, I've got some dark kidney beans and some light red kidney beans. I have one can of light red and I have two cans of dark red. You can also use black beans, any kind of bean that you like. You like the color, the texture of. So I'm going to open these beans, but I'm not going to dump them right into the pot. These beans are packed in a brine as most canned beans are. So whatever bean you choose, you want to make sure that you rinse and drain them really well. You don't want that brine in your chili. So I'll take these over to the sink, put them in a colander, and rinse them real, real good. I'm going to pour them all together and rinse them all together. The brine kind of looks like water. If you read the ingredients, it certainly isn't poison or anything like that, but it's just a salty liquid brine that you don't want. Did Here's you move the pasta sauce can? What? Move the pasta sauce can so we can see what you're doing. So, all I'm doing here is rinsing these beans really well. Two cans of red beans, dark red beans, one can of light red beans. You can see the variation in color and in the picture. You can see from a color point of view. Being an artist, I'm attracted to the colors. It needs to be attractive. So let's put this in the pot and see what it looks like. We've got the small light colored navy beans and then we've got dark red beans and, and we've got two strays right there on the edge. <coughs> The light red beans. Okay, so let's stir this up a little bit and you can see this is really starting to look like something. It's got a nice consistency. You don't want your chili to be runny. You want it to be full-bodied. You want when you take a spoon of that you want to get some meat and we've got one more can that we're going to add. What's okay. that? And this is just for flavoring and a little seasoning. This is a can called Chili Beans. I'm just going to put one can of these in. You can get these in hot or you can just get them in regular. They're pre-seasoned and these would not be drained because the sauce that they're in is a seasoned sauce that will enhance your chili. So these are chili beans. It smells like chili. And the sauce is much thicker, as you can see. I think I can see other things in there besides beans. And these are pinto beans. And the ingredients say tomato paste, seasonings, pepper, spices, onion, garlic powder, natural flavorings, and salt. So we've got some hidden sodium as an ingredient in some of these foods already. Now, if you take a look at our chili, it's multicolored, got a nice solid body to it. 
But let's taste it because there's one thing still missing. It's good, but it doesn't have a lot of chili flavor yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is put in just some chili powder. And here's where you season it to taste. If you like it hot, you could even throw in some jalapenos. If you like it hot, you could also use hot chili powder. But this is just regular chili powder. I don't like my food too hot. I'm going to give it a good, generous shaking. I'll take a different spoon since I tasted with that one. I'll stir it in. And what makes chili the best is to let it simmer on the stove for about a half hour and let all those flavors melt together and blend. So we're done. That didn't take very long. Come take a look at the pot. Got some nice color and texture. Nice full bodied. Yes it is. It looks very good. And we'll give it a taste. Very good. But I think I might put a little more chili powder in it. You can imagine that little can of chili powder doesn't necessarily last all that long. This is not hot chili powder. <clears throat> okay. I'll take another clean spoon. And I imagine that once this simmers on the stove for about a half hour on low, we will have a delicious batch of chili. We probably have maybe a gallon and a half to two gallons of chili here. And I'm you could freeze sure. that if you didn't want to eat it all at once. It yes, should freeze you very could well. Freeze it freezes very well. So can you get a nice picture of how pretty that is? Oh yes. Just hold it still and I've got it. There we go. We'll put a lid on it. Set the timer for about a half hour. Turn the stove down to warm and we're done.